producer Derek Long is constantly on the road for North Carolina Weekend, crossing the state from one end to the other. So, what does Derek do when he's got a day off? Well, what's his idea of fun? A road trip, of course. Let's tag along with Derek as he explores Granville County. I headed up I-85 to Oxford, the Granville County seat. I stopped in at the Granville County Tourism Office on Hillsborough Street to get some basic info. Here at our visitor center, we actually provide pamphlets on downtown tours that you can either walk through downtown Oxford, or you can hop in your car and not only explore Oxford, but actually Granville County as a whole. You can visit some great antique shops. Like this and that on Main Street, or further out College Street, there's a Remember When. And they actually feature not only great antiques that you may not find in different places, but they also have a general store that has a lot of different North Carolina products. Stovall's Gifts on Main Street also features North Carolina products. Raleigh Cake Pops in Creedmoor offers handmade gourmet gifts for all occasions. And just down the road, you'll find Cedar Creek Gallery, tucked between historic tobacco barns and artist studios. The 4,000 square foot gallery features fine handmade crafts from over 250 local, regional, and national artists. Feeling a bit peckish? If you're in the Creedmoor area, I'll probably go downtown and to a little place called Finch's Restaurant. Or grab lunch at the Creedmoor Drugs Diner. In Oxford, check out the Harvest Restaurant. And it's actually a farm to table restaurant. Get a little exercise with a walk through historic downtown Oxford, or for something more bucolic, we actually have access to five different lakes within our own county that run from the northern part all the way to the southern part. There are parts that connect to Carr Lake, and there are also parts that connect to the Tar River. There are a number of museums around for history buffs. The old county jail behind the courthouse houses the Granville County History Museum. But I wanted some more local history, so I stopped off at the Richard H. Thornton Library's North Carolina room and talk with historian Mark Pace to learn more about the area's history before continuing on my Granville County tour. This area was part of what they call the Granville District, which was the area owned by uh, John Carteret, or also known as Lord Granville, or Earl Granville, Earl of Granville. And uh, he basically owned all the land that's in the northern half of what's now North Carolina. Most of the people that came here came in the uh, 1720s and 30s, the, about 90% of the people that came came from Virginia, Southside Virginia, Tidewater Virginia area. There are second and third generation settlers from, great, from England that came to Jamestown and came to Tidewater area. They, brought, they had a large number of slaves, they brought their slaves with them. The plantation system kind of took off a little bit here that maybe it didn't in other places. In fact, Granville was one of five North Carolina counties with as many as 10,000 slaves. Granville County is the tobacco growing center of the world in the 1860s, 70s, and 80s. But back before the revolution, this area was very, very pro-independence, pro-patriot, uh, very viscerally anti-British uh, anti at the time. John Penn, who resided in Granville County, was a signer and Declaration of Independence. A real prominent man that was involved in the revolutionary spirit here was a man named Thomas Person. I always like mentioning Thomas Person because I don't think he gets his due, historically speaking. He never had children. His plantation house is gone. We're not even sure where he's buried. But he, um, he owned about 80,000 acres. He was a tremendous landowner. He was a very wealthy man. He owned a lot of slaves. But he was almost kind of a traitor to his class because he was involved in the regulator movement. He was very anti-British. He was very anti-big government. Even after the American Revolution, he led the fight for North Carolina to not approve the Constitution. One great thing about Oxford in the 1800s was it had a reputation for being a very literate and cultured place. There were several colleges and private academies here. Mary Potter Academy was here for African Americans, Warner Military School, uh, Oxford Female Academy, and a number of famous writers were from here. Thad Stem was from here, Sam Reagan. Even to this day, uh, there is a sense of community that the people here care about history, they care about uh, literature, they care, there's a certain cultural uh, attentiveness here. It's a very beautiful community. I feel like we've got something special here. This is Derek Long for North Carolina Weekend. For more information about things to do in Granville County, 
call the Granville County Tourism Development Authority at 919-693-6125 or visit them online at visitgranvillenc.com.